Ralph here once again, and we have a controversial topic to cover tonight from a data analytic standpoint. So it's not going to be any hype, and I'm going to try not to interject any publisher bias. Now, all because something is critical of a mask study does not mean that the person reading the study is anti-mask. It just means there may not be enough information available to make a solid judgment in reference to recommending a mask. That'd be like saying I am anti-hammer all because I need to cut a piece of wood. So you have to look at the right tool for the right job. Not anti-mask, just not pro-mask in reference to the current pandemic at hand. So with that disclaimer in mind, let us go into the research as follows. Denmark trial measures effectiveness of adding a mask recommendation to other public health measures. Researchers are really, really detailed in trying to say, do not try to add your own interpretation to the study. Just look at the study and then make a rational judgment call based upon that. Now, we are going to look at an article from the Washington Post, which says the exact opposite, adds tons of publisher bias. So those individuals which are biostatisticians or into data analysis will get a real kick out of uh, the Washington Post uh, review of the study itself. Now, I'm not to bemean or bemoan any particular journalist, but with that in mind, let us proceed. All right, the Damask 19 trial. What we looked at right here was as follows. So let's go down a little bit. All right, the Damask trial on the Damask. Dan Mass 19 trial randomized participants to follow those public health measures with or without an additional recommendation to wear surgical masks when outside the home. Keep in mind, these were pro masks, not cloth masks, but really good quality masks. Mass use outside the hospital was uncommon in Denmark at the time. After one month of follow-up, 1.8% of participants in the mass group and 2.1% of the control group developed an infection. While the evidence excludes a large personal protective effect of mask wearing, it weakly supports lesser degrees of protection. And here's the caveat, cannot definitively exclude no effect. Read the line carefully meaning it weakly supports it but cannot necessarily define that there was absolutely zero effect so it's kind of like you know well it, it doesn't work but maybe it does but the evidence shows it doesn't but we can't rule out with all certainty that it doesn't have some positive impact definitively exclude. So with that in mind, we are going to go into the study itself. So let's look at this and then we're going to go into the data analytics and look at it from a different standpoint as well. All right, here we go. I'm only going to go through excerpts because we have a lot of ground to cover. And again, these run a little long, so please bear with me. The Dan Mass 19 trial was designed to examine only the mass protective effect, not source control, i.e. what is source control? Putting a mask on an individual who happens to be infected or test positive and or showing symptoms. Uh, so let us proceed. Although some believe that randomized trials of masks are infeasible, this trial was carefully conducted in a real world setting. Remember that word, words, uh, three words, real world setting. You're gonna see the beautiful example of publisher bias when we go to the Washington Post. The research recruited 6,024 adults, then go blah, 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 and so on and so forth. You can read that later on, and of course, I'll have the link for you. All right, let's back this up a little bit. And oh, we're already there. Beautiful. All right, here we go. The face masks provided for participants were high-quality surgical masks with a filtration rate of 98%. Not a sock being worn around a person's head or a bandana. This was, These were excellent masks. So... You have to keep that in mind as well. These are top grade masks. Now, many of you that are actually in the real world and deal with real world scenarios see masks all over the place. They're cloth, they're bandana, they're paper, they're this, they're stuffed animals, whatever they are. So this is the best case scenario. And they still could not find a statistical significance in this randomized controlled study. So keep that in mind. Let us proceed as follows. Discussion. A recommendation to wear a surgical mask when outside the home, among others, did not reduce at conventional levels of statistical significance. This is important. We'll read a little further as we go on. 
Incidence of SARS COV2 infection compared with no RASP, no RASP, no mask recommendation. Now this takes a little bit of reader's comprehension. We're going to go to this part right here, the confidence intervals. So many people misread this, but I'm going to read it slowly so you could catch it, what they're saying. The CIs are compatible with a possible 46% reduction, if I can pronounce it properly, 46% reduction to 23% increase in infection among mask wearers. This is why the statistical significance was not strong enough, even though we had, a, looks like that we apologize to researchers, had a good sampling group of 6,000 people. The numbers were across the board. Often people do not catch that 23% increase in infection among mask wearers. That is an intriguing aspect, compatible with a possible 46% reduction, maybe lower, to a 23% increase infection among mask wearers, maybe higher. These findings do offer evidence about the degree of protection mask wearers can anticipate reading comprehension. So we'll proceed to the next one as follows. Now again, the links will be there for you to proceed on your own. So I don't bias it any more than I kind of am in the way I'm wording it. So keep in mind, truth and disclosure, I personally have a bias against the claims being made in reference to how powerful the masks are. I heard on a news station that rhymes with an animal, rhymes with an animal, which the analogy is in reference to an animal, saying masks are 80% effective. And then the um, a lot of the major data analytic outlets say masks are at least 30% effective. Now keep in mind, in a lab, in the real world, the two completely different things, but let us proceed. All right, here we go. This is the actual uh, tally, so to say. So you can freeze that and look at it on your own using logistic regression, da 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 da, -da and so on and so forth. And so that will give you an idea. All right, here we go. Now we're going to start going to start heading to the conclusion. The current trial shows that any contribution of mass to risk reduction in the community through personal protection is likely to be small. That is reading from the editorial in reference to this particular study. All right, and then can uh, keep on going. Whereas masks would not be effective against via the spread of via aerosols. Often, many of you may be listening to the news whether one week they say that you know COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 is aerosolized, and all of a sudden they backtrack, saying no, it's not. Because something is really weird in reference to the emotional attachment to a mask that is just odd. It's become too tribal, and those in the biostatistician community, the data analytics, uh, the epidemiologists, um, it's it's weird and often you'll hear this too fomite and what we're looking at there is basically it's uh that the masks well, let me read through this real fast masks would not be effective against spread via aerosols which might penetrate or circumvent a face mask also another caveat people that have a face mask on and have a beard you really think that's going to make a difference you know how poorly surgical masks work on individuals with beards so just for something to do research on your own. Thus spread of SARS-CoV-2 via aerosols would at least partially explain the present findings, lack of eye protection. See, they're making the analogy that it may be aerosolized, which would basically, it's like paper, scissors, rocks, except now it's a rock against the scissor. Lack of eye protection may also be of importance and use of face shields also covering the eyes rather than the face mask only has been advocated to halt the conjunctival, uh, conjunctival route of transmission. We observed no statistically significant interaction between wearers and non-wearers of eyeglasses. That's important. Uh, recent reports indicate that transmission of SARS-CoV-2 via formites, formites uh, is unusual. But remember we talked about before uh, that, uh, that the floors were testing positive uh, for the SARS-CoV-2 at 100% rate in some areas. Uh, from view of the studies. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And proceed. 
This is an important aspect, and I want you to read through this real importantly because researchers are terrified about going against the bureaucratic dogma because they need to keep their jobs. And any any scientist these days is now very, very politically aware of what's going on, and they have to make their judgments and release data which can affect billions of people carefully because some politician or some other individual may be offended by the outcome of the research. We This is called, this is what happened during the Dark Ages. Now, in the Dark Ages, they developed a term called circumlocution. Circumlocution, think about it, circumvent locution as far as language itself. Where, where from Da Vinci to Michelangelo to Galileo, they had to actually speak in code because they're afraid that at that time the theocracy would crush them, which often it did, uh, if they actually spoke openly. So we're not that far off in the Dark Ages. Keep in mind, our mentality still pretty much is in the 13 or 1400s. You speak against the mask, well, we crush you. We think not. More responsible, we'll read the from the top, with fierce resistance to mass recommendations by leaders in the public in some locales. It is irresponsible for annals to publish these results, which could easily be misused by the opposed to mass recommend, those opposed to mass recommendations. We think not, again quoting. More responsible would be not to publish the results of a carefully designed research because these findings were not as favorable or definitive as some may hope. That is really, really, really super chilling. And we're going to get to the chilling part in a second. All right, hang on a second. That's a, let's go right to the uh, the chilling part. I am going to go to the Washington Post, and there's our, our basically our full study from Nanos National Medicine. And this is how they word it. Check this out. This is really interesting. Now, I, I really have a lot of respect for Jeff Bezos or Jeff, whatever it is, and so on and so forth. And sometimes reporters are... Uh, Pressured. But this is an important, important example for those not familiar with biostatistics uh, and so on and so forth, or what publisher bias truly is. And this is nothing against the reporter. Who knows what pressures they have to contend with in reference to publishing an article. So health experts dispute conservatives' claim that the new study finds masks are ineffective. Now, this is really one interesting aspect I found quite intriguing. Here we go. Ready, ready, ready. Here it goes. Read this. Read this. That's not how conservative circles interpret it. I can care less about the rest of the, the part. The thing about it, you have to look at labeling and how important th this is in reference to a polarization. I like this. Democracy dies in the darkness. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't mean it's in favor of or against. It's just making a statement. All right, so <laughs> just keep that in mind. That's not how conservative circles interpret it. The online commentators and elected officials have argued against mandating masks and strewed that the results support their beliefs. Science is not about beliefs. Science is starting with a belief and then basically find the information to either validate or, or discount that the hypothesis. Even before the paper was published, the search term Danish mass study spiked on Google as an unfounded theory had spread that other credible scientific journeys had, journals had declined to publish the research because liberal... Now, I, this is the first time in my experience I am seeing a a basically a politicized term precede the actual job title. Liberal scientists. You can't be a liberal or conservative true scientist. There's no such thing. You're either a scientist or you're not because scientists have to proceed in their experiments obviously without bias. So when you start biasing it in order to construe or promote a political ideology, that's not really science. Because liberal scientists were keeping the study in the wraps. The Lancet, the New England Journal of Medicine, the JAMA told the Post was not the policy to comment on papers the journals had not published. You know, that's not really cool. And this is interesting. Now check out the Washington Post. Ready? We're going to go to the conclusion. All right. We're, I want you to, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready? Um, let's see. This is the end. No. Up, here we go. Uh, da, 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 da. However, the more accurate trend... Uh, However, the more accurate translation in this study is uninformative regarding the benefits or their lack of of wear a mask outside of a health care setting. Now, keep in mind, outside of a health care setting, 
did they even read the same study? Where to go here? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? What is it? So we go back over here. All right. The the study was carefully conducted in a real world setting. All right. Beautiful example of publisher bias. Now we proceed next, and we're going to get to the interesting one on the British one. We're going to go to the British corruption trial in a second. Here it goes. You'll you'll see what happens there in a second. All right. So we want to go down to here. I want to bring this note up real fast because the last time we were talking about um, vaccine design and how things go wrong. Literally, after we discussed the polio vaccine, a few days later, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. It's just like clockwork. And uh, as we go up here, most outbreaks of type 2 polio virus are caused by the vaccine. See? And that's just an interesting correlation, of course, funded by our friends at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So that's, again, vaccine efficacy in trials. For those not familiar or just come into this video for the first time, we covered this last week. All right, next. Um, before we go to that, this is part of the damage that obviously the pandemic is lockdowns and mitigation effects are creating. In the prior week, we also said depression is also a major, major susceptibility to COVID-19 infection and so on and so forth. But what's important here is we have to cover how data analytics is actually covered. Now, this article right here is interesting because this is when data scientists attack. Big Brother Fury is the government uses Twitter as a propaganda tool. Now, this is in Britain uh, to attack the male's coronavirus analysis. Wow, this was amazing. They tore them apart. All right, so what happened was the Daily Mail published an article based upon data analytics in reference to uh, validating or discounting the government's claim. They found that the government was basically, how would you say, full of it. Or I should use words better as misguided. This is important because we're covering coronavirus and coronavirus needs to be covered truthfully and if data is not being presented truthfully then you as an individual are basically hamstrung in reference to making a proper decision or have a proper perception of the reality of the situation all right so i'm not concerned about the, the comorbidities and things like that and basically the the inaccurate request what i want to go down to is the reality now this is in great britain now, this is how they present the news. Currently, only 13% of the beds are occupied by COVID-19 patients. All right. Uh, this is interesting. Here we keep on going. So basically, they're trying to say that with the flat, you know, hospitals are being over flooded and everything else like that. And they're saying the hospital's near full capacity. Well, when they actually did the research, bureaucrats were just speaking. They were just speaking. And... Uh, Half the hospitals didn't even have a single COVID-19 patient. All right, you imagine, then what ended up happening, you have to understand what Britain, then they went into um, this mass, massive, you know, curfew, i.e. like we're having in California here. And there's a reason for the more the higher positivity rate. We'll go to that in a second. How to compare to last year? This is ironic as well. On November 5th, the most recent data available, there were actually 1,293 fewer patients in hospital beds than last year's November's average. The British have to be fuming. And what's interesting about this is all of a sudden after this article came out, guess who's removing the curfew and the lockdown as well shortly in a few, in a few weeks. All right, but to proceed, the Nightingale Hospital they built you know, to terrify everyone, remember us here, we had at least tents and things like that with beds, only 1.23% full. All right, the pre-existing conditions, um, basically another peak, uh, so on and so forth. Check this out, ready? Here it goes. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but elderly dying than normal, according to the latest Office of National Statistic figures from October 2020. In spite of all the COVID-19 deaths, the average death rate in over 75 was significantly lower this year than it was last October. So you see the data right, 6,900 per 100,000 compared to 7,141 last year. And then we go into the infection rates. 
Now, the thing about it is, is, yeah, it's more infections, but guess what's happening at the same time? More people are going to school. So the students and basically and everything else like that are all being tested. And the thing about it is, is the least vulnerable group, so they're showing up positive, but they're asymptomatic. So you have all this, this massive testing going on, and the people which are driving up the positivity rates are the people that don't even know they have are ill at all. The infection rate is actually highest in school age children and students, the least vulnerable demographic, and the lowest among those uh, among the over 70s. So the infection rate actually went down in those over 70s. And as the infection rate rose in children, children and students, but yet again, they're the least vulnerable demographic. All right, so we went to the Danish mass study, the government study, and also too. But now we go back, I want to go back to the mass study real fast, and then we want to go to the data analytics. Back a long time ago in 2015, this poor researcher had no clue what was going to happen. Cloth masks resulted in significantly higher rates of infection than medical masks. And this was done in reference to influenza. Now, everyone's automatically going to think myopically. They think, what has it to do with COVID? Well, it's not about the COVID aspect. It's about people being sick. And so you have all these people now wearing cloth masks and so on and so forth. Even though the research here was done in influenza, we're hitting flu season. The objective is for the well-being of everybody. So, all right, so you didn't get sick because of COVID, but now because you're wearing a cloth mask and you're creating, you know, which is uh, influenza is aerosolized and you're creating these huge droplets, you're actually making more people infected. So, for example, right here we go with the conclusion. Uh, randomized controlled trial of cloth masks, which was done in 2015, which the title of the study is right there. All right. And what they found out was, this is an important finding for occupational health and safety. Moisture retention, reuse of cloth mask, and pore filtration may result in increased risk of infection. Go back to our original study, up to a, you know between a certain amount of uh, lower, up to 23% higher infection rate. Again, just to give you an idea of the spectrum without making any direct claim itself. Information is very powerful, uh, and information can be weaponized as well as also at the same time to uncertainty being weaponized and which is creating a lot of stress among the general populace. So keep that in mind. I'll have this link in reference to the research itself as well. All right, with that in mind, I'm going to go through our mass comparison. Do, do, do. All right, world mask. We're going to look at we're going to run a little bit of a, here's the bar here. Where do I start here? All right. So let's go through here. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the mask uh, mandate recommendations from each country. The data that we're pulling is from the Our World in Data, which is maintained from Oxford University. It'd be nice if they actually merge the data frames, those data analysts out there. Let's go do what I did here. Uh, so we can get a quick run. All right, this is just me basically uh, doodling. I'm looking for comparisons or correlations. And of course, what I took is I took the general uh, world and data thing, took this, the mass statistics uh, when the mask mandates went up or down, and I merged the files with this file there. So you can see there. So I'm not making up numbers. All right, and then here I'm looking at this, looking at that, da 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 da, so on and so forth. All right, so here we go. That, yeah, that looks cute. And uh, and then we run into here. So now the bar charts here. What we're looking at here is these countries here are at level four. And level four, run down real fast. Zero, for example, like Sweden has no mask policy. One is where it's recommended, which surprised me. I thought in Japan, you know, there could be a cultural aspect. I would have thought it would have been like, you know, three or four, but it wasn't. And then we have... Uh, See, again, that's a bias. Let me fix this right here. Two, we have required in some public spaces, for example, Germany. Countries we, we hear about in the news because we're so isolated in our international reporting that these news stations, and they all work from news, news pools, we really have no clue what's going on, except from a soundbite here and there. Well, Germany, for example, Ireland, and even the United Kingdom, after everything we read about as far as their outbreaks, it's a two on the mask scale, which a two is required in some areas. Three and, of course, four. And uh, four is basically required outside the home. Now, keep in mind from confounding aspect, 
We all know in the United States, certain states don't require it as much, so on and so forth. So I really would like the, you know, these guys do it for free. So I'm not going to say anything as far as making demands on a lot of these people doing the data analytics. You think about this, all the COVID stuff that's going on, all the coronavirus and SARS-CoV-2, how much money is being thrown into data analytics? That should raise the greatest error suspicion because knowledge is power. And as long as you can weaponize uncertainty, you can make people wear a paper bag over their head. All right, so here we go. And these are the fours and these are the threes. Now we're going to look at the data and I'm going to give you an idea. And these are the twos and these are the ones and these are the nuns. These are the countries we're going to look at. We're going to look at a few in the four range. And we are going to look at, oops, we'll make it this fixed real fast because that's United Kingdom. And where did United Kingdom? And that's Italy. There. Almost made a mistake. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at, because uh, Italy was obviously one of the first to break out. So it's important to look at. We're going to look at some of the fours and we're going to compare them to some of the, the ones and the zeros. And here we go. We're going to start with the United States because that's where I'm at. And let's look at our first graph. All right, you see right here how to read it. Our, off to our left side here is our four. That's our mass grading. And this is deaths per million. So this is the United States. And this you can see the impact of the mask in reference to that. All right, and I'm not going to say anything because actually I probably am, but I can't help myself. But however, though, I'm going to try not to say anything so you can make your own judgment call. All right, so these are deaths per million. And this, you can see the mask mandates as they go up, you know, going in line right there. And so here we are in cases per million. And this is the mask. It almost seems like, you know, here I go, I'm going to say something I shouldn't be saying. As this goes up, da da da. But that's not the reason why. That's confounding. And this reason why, you ever see the, you hear about the, uh, they do this in um, biostatistics often, or statistics in reference to bias. You know, when they say coffee causes lung cancer and because a study comes out that way, coffee drinkers have more lung cancer. But in reality, it's because coffee drinkers tend to be smokers and smokers tend to have more lung cancer. You will, you understand. All right, then the United States, here we go again. This is why your cases are higher. So not because people are wearing more masks that the cases per million are higher. It's because this is your test per thousand and this is your cases per million. Look at the correlations pretty darn strong again there's a mutation that took place around this time uh year about april and may uh, which basically may have may have resulted in greater transmissibility but less lethality all right now the first one we're going to look at here now i'm going to group all the code together and if you want to i'll put this on github uh it's not a big deal here's sweden oh yeah because we like to make fun of sweden all right, here it is, Sweden. We are looking at deaths per million. Now I'm going to group all the plots together. Mass level, you see how that is? This is deaths per million, no mask mandate. Mask mandate, no mask mandate. All right, you make your own judgment call. Look at the cases all of a sudden. All right, now this is an interesting thing. If I want to scare the life out of you, I would stop right here and not show you the next chart. This is cases per million. Now, albeit it could be students, younger individuals, and so on and so forth. But also, you look at it and you go, wow, why are the cases skyrocketing in Sweden? Well, we're going to look at the tests per thousand compared to cases per million. Now, look at that. Make your own judgment call. Are tests resulting in a higher caseload? That's a question that you have to answer. Next country. Boom. We are going to look at... I'm going to show you a neat little trick as far as uh, as far as uh, what I discovered in reference to doing these data frames and charts. Columbia. All right, because I wanted to look at one that was up and down. Mass mandate, it went down. There's a death per million. Interesting. Columbia again. We're going to run through real fast. Cases per million, mass level. Look at this. Test per thousand. Cases per million. Strong correlation. What do you say? Now we are going to look at Japan. Here we go. 
it's really interesting because I'm trying to find correlations. That's what epidemiology is. And I, even though I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not even a data scientist, I'm just a person who just does this because there's really nothing that good on TV. And so this is what you look for as far as trying to develop a relation. It's trying to find relations that can result in a causative relationship. And if you have, and the problem is I can't sink my teeth into anything that's really given a causative relationship. So here we go, blue mask level and pandemic mitigation or the spread, except nutritional levels. It seems like coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, whatever it is, really ravages people who have poor diets or poor general health. Malnutrition is a biggie. If you're malnourished and D, zinc, or selenium, you start losing your sense of smell, sense of taste, and so on and so forth, because that's a side effect of having low zinc levels, for example, or, or basically being compromised of vitamin D, and you're susceptible. And the one thing that does work better correlation-wise than masks will ever work is vitamin D. But to proceed, how many governments recommend vitamin D? Not many. All right, so here we are, Japan, blue mask level. Remember, they only went to a one. And this is the deaths per million. And here we are again. This is case per million, mass level. And this is your testing. Strong correlation. You're going to find probably the strongest correlation between testing and cases than because so many cases are asymptomatic. And it's okay. The Lancet originally predicted in March that up to 80% of the world was going to be infected. Now, if you had that information and you were an unscrupulous politician, a bureaucrat, and you knew how you could play the audience, yeah, you get my picture. All right, here we go. This the next one we are dealing with is New Zealand. There is our mass level, mandated to two, down to one, and that's the deaths per million. All right, here we are, mass level, deaths per million. Here's our cases per million to test for 1,000. All right, correlation, you decide. All right, here we go, next one is going to be Finland. All right, and Finland, here we are. The Scandinavian countries, as Dr. Fauci would like to say. Uh, mass level, one, deaths per million. See, this is why getting news, you can't just say masks work or masks don't work unless you have controls. Without controls, you're, you're not really doing anything. You're working You're working from inside the fish tank instead of looking outside the fish tank. You have to have comparisons. All right, and then Finland, there you are. Cases per million, mass level, da-da-da. And what do you know? All right, so here we go. That's test per thousand, cases per million. Now, this is kind of interesting. This is one thing I did not realize. Now, I'll show you the next one. Hang on, hang on. This is going to be India. Now, India, you hear, like, you hear they, the media utilizes totals, not cases per million. So you never have perspective. Mass level four. I don't know how well it's been enforced, but still just the same. Deaths per million. All right. There you are, right there. It never really was that high ever, even though every life matters. But still, people with comorbidities and things like that and diagnosis and correlations of diagnosis – you know, complications of COVID, so on and so forth, it gets complicated. All right, India, again, mass level, cases per million. What do you know? What a correlation. All right, now here's a trick for the data analytic people out there. I did not realize you could do this. You could actually assign uh, basically the variable uh, to the data frame as such. And like you see right there, and right there, even, you know, I, I was messing around. I would never knew. But man, does that save time when trying to do what we're doing here. Here we go. The value to the variable, for those not familiar. Spain. All right. Spain got freaking ravaged in the beginning. Now, obviously, it's easy uh, to basically state that you have a correlation between masks and deaths per million uh, because of the correlation and timing. But however, though, Let's see what happens. I can't even, it's like, I can't even, I should have to make the graph a little higher. All right, so here we go. The mass and the cases went up. It was kind of interesting because as we had mass, we had more cases. But again, the cases don't matter as much as the testing. And you have a population that's highly asymptomatic. A lot of people don't realize a lot of viruses that are out there are 
uh, I forgot which one, but I guess relation to one of the ones that caused Epstein Barr, a hundred percent of the world has been infected by. And so you have to really change the dynamic of what a virus is uh, to evolution. So being people terrified of something which is fairly common, like how many people have had the cold? How many people have you known that have not had a cold since they were born? And so basically, if you went testing people for a common cold and went by cases of rhinovirus, uh, you're, you're terrifying people. But it depends on the people that end up in the hospital and you know have reactions. All right, now we go to France. Here we go. Ba boom. There we are. France. I mean, a lot of these people, man, in the beginning, you cannot blame politicians in the beginning for being concerned. No doubt about it. All right. But however, though, after that point, fear tend to take hold and they start making reactions based upon PTSD of the event as opposed to actually calmer heads prevail, like Sweden. Here's France. Looks like you have a little bit of rise here. I understand the concern. There you are. And there's France again. There's your mass levels. Again, you're, if you're looking from a data analytic, from a correlation standpoint, it's tough to make a de determination saying are masks really making a difference. And the bit then, look at your cases per million. Really correlates heavily with testing. That's the thing. Now, this part is an anomaly for France, but we're being honest with the figures. However, though, this part really correlates pretty heavily with that part. Is the infection spreading? Or is there already had it spread to the community and just the testing are picking it up? Our right, United Kingdom, real important. And guess who's, after that article broke out on the Daily Mail, I showed you, guess who's ending their uh, curfew coming up on December 2nd? United Kingdom. King Dun. King Dun. Oh, my gosh. Please forgive me, people. King Dum. There. All right, there we are. And so basically that we're looking at. And you see that in the beginning, again, you can understand the fear or concern, but the mass level is only two. I would have thought that would have been higher. United Kingdom again, here we are, boom, boom, boom. And without me even turning the page, can you guess what's prior you're gonna show? Yeah, you got it. And then Italy, Italy's important because this is where it all began. Not really where it all began, but that's where in the world started paying attention. Please forgive me on that. And they were Italy. Look at that. It went. They went from no mask to boom masks. Now you could see the correlation there. Once you made that mask mandate, if you're looking at this and you're trying to, you're going to base your data on a correlation. You can say, "Wow, look what masks did immediately." So keep that in mind for those which were misguided. But again, the correlation is not causation. Here we go. And this is just recently. Here's the cases. I'm curious, I don't even know what it is, the next one, but let's look at it, yep, there it is. Look, testing definitely correlates with cases. So if basically, if a politician is just going by this and they're not stating this, then you need a new leader. All right, and then of course here, this is me, for example, when looking at Paragrid, this is for data analytics, da da da. This is how I'm trying to look at correlations, this KDE plot, so on and so forth. All right, let's move forward with the rest of the studies real fast before the rest of you fall asleep here. Let's go. All right, and oop, wrong one. There it is. Let's go right here. Now this, whoop, went past that, past that. This is important because, again, no one should be collateral damage due to pandemic mitigation. But it's happening. Look at this. Besides all this extremely damaging data and this mental health of individuals, 49% reported a great degree of loneliness. I mean, besides everything else, I mean, you got to really, really start saying, hey, man, you've got to give people a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, with all these scientists going, we have to wait to 2022, we're going to get a vaccine, and we have to wear masks and social distancing. Still, seriously, stop, 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 stop. I mean, I mean, you could still be realistic and give an element of hope and levity, but no, man, it's like California, I'm here I am, and now they decide to put a quarantine for those not familiar with California. Think about this. They're shutting businesses down. People are going to be unemployed. 
right before Thanksgiving, all the way up to Christmas. And they could put in a quarantine and limit the number of family members that could be at a home. And so you have people losing their businesses, losing their jobs, no more plush unemployment, and they're all doing it with a smile on their face. Seriously, making people feel powerless is the worst thing you can do. Stop saying you're trying to keep us safe because you know what? You're not. Or at least not anybody I know of. If anything, you're really met, uh, you are becoming the boogeyman. So this is important too. What did we do last week? I told you if we continue this path, they're coming for your pets. All right, and what we discover here? Right there. The efficient transmission between domestic cats indicates a significant animal and public health need to investigate a potential human cat human transmission chain. So again, nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. End this now. Take care of yourself. It's not about being safe. It's about being strong. And being strong is about taking care of yourself. Do what you can because guess what? What we learn from this pandemic can really help us out potentially in the next pandemic. Because I could tell you one thing, most of the politicians and bureaucrats have all misstepped and taken the wrong direction. So it's really going to be you and I and the information that this wonderful research has come out with in reference to protecting ourselves. To protect ourselves, nutrition, taking care of yourself, so on and so forth. I don't count on a politician or bureaucrat. Those, the only way they're good at is making people angry and polarizing people into little tiny subgroups. All right, real fast. Here we go. Now, these charts are at a RAM. All right, so here we are, our Sweden information. Uh, did this Sweden? Yeah. And this new case is smoothed. We want to look at that real fast per million. There's the USA, Sweden. New case is smoothed. That was on September 1st. And new death smooth. There was Iceland. Boom, boom, boom. United States still unfortunately in a horrible position leading the pack. Here's Sweden. It began to drop again. It went up for a little bit and then it started going down. USA compared to the rest of the world. It really sucks. All right, here we go. Investigating correlations between COVID-19. Let's go back to the top. I ran these ahead of time because I know we're running short on time. And here we are. What we're looking at here is basically looking at life expectancy. That was the overall case mortality. Currently, it's pretty low. The United States, unfortunately, starts with the highest life expectancy here and goes down. Remember the British study we just looked at? How now there's less people dying that are over the age of 70 this year than there was the prior year without COVID? Still, when we thought age was a correlating factor, was not as important as, com as other having other issues or com comorbidities. All right, population density. We, then we thought it was population density, Singapore being the most dense. And look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Now, Haiti, I, Vietnam, and things like that. I'm not going to say anything, but it may be testing. Let's check it out. Uh, total cases per million. I'm just going to scroll through real fast. Uh, new death smooth per million. United States was at 3.6 last week. Now it's the 4.345. What the heck? And so this is all the countries doing better than the U.S., Madagascar, Australia, Vietnam, Haiti, da 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 da, da. You could argue the testing and the development index and everything else like that. All right, let's go to COVID data focus. All right, these are KDE plots. Do I have anything interesting here? All right, here it is. Hospitalization increases, positive increases? No. There's no correlation. Because probably, as we had kids go back to school and stuff like that, they probably a lot of them tested positive and look at your hospitalization. All right, and here we go. Hospitalization to death increase, pretty scary. Don't know why that is there. Here's our positive increases, still going up, terrifying people, terrifying people. Positives to hospital percentages, low and down. Positive to death percentages, overall, dropping pretty significantly. Look at the rest of the graphs there, not to blind you, the data, 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 da. All right, let me go to three, COVID states. All right, starting from up here, looking real fast. And there's South Dakota. Remember, you know, like five people in the state, you're gonna be bouncing all up and down like that, you see? That's the death increase per 100,000 because you have a high standard deviation. Uh, Florida. I want to look at Florida here. This is uh, death increase per total. No, I don't want to look at that. Positive per 100,000. 
look at this. There's Florida. And even though they went into the lockdown, what the heck? Looks just like everyone else. All right, let's look at deaths per 100,000. There's Florida, California, New York. Less restrictions, no corn, no uh, curfews, and so on and so forth. What the heck? You know, they're free. They're not. Doesn't look like it's making much of a difference, does it? Again, correlation, real important. And then we go down this information, this information, those are the deaths per state, and those are the positive increases per state. Of course, if California's doing more testing, the uh, increases don't make a difference. If there's if testing, they're picking up asymptomatic individuals. How can you have a pandemic where if the media did not tell you there was a pandemic, you would never know there's a pandemic? Think about that. All right, proceed as follows. Audit, we'll go to the world and the world data. Here we are. That is the cases smooth per million, deaths per million. Remember, we're even entering fall. There's your mortality rate as percentage. And still the same information, same information. Lockdowns, da da da, USA, Sweden, that was the probably cases. Yep, smooth per million, deaths per million. You know, still with Sweden with zero mask or any sort of a lockdown philosophy per se, very light. And there's Sweden compared to the United States. I let you guess what color Sweden is. And then here we go, new deaths, Sweden to the USA. Can you guess what color Sweden is? There is our data per se, uh, right there. If you want to look at that, up to the 21st of November, even though it's now the 22nd of November, 2 a.m. And there we are again, da da da, so on and so forth. Let's run down to our Monte Carlo. I want to go to new deaths prediction per million. Monte Carlo is still holding strong. And let's make sure I didn't miss anything real fast. Mask, COVID state, da 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 Please forgive me for moving real fast towards the end here. Uh, Denmark trial, Danish study, da da da. And I think, yeah, we are done. So we covered. Oh, wait, what's this? Yeah, we're done. So we covered the start from the beginning. We covered the Denmark trial. Again, a lot of information is running on Twitter in reference to face masks and positive cases and so on and so forth. Be really cautious. Don't fall into a trap of getting into information where, you know, a lot of these countries, for example, may not even have in the World Development Index, maybe not keeping track. So data for data, case for case, cases per million, cases per thousand. Make sure you have information which you can compare directly when uh, postulating an argument. Otherwise, you know, you're going to look foolish. Validate your sources. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. We went through this. Boom, boom, boom. Went to the Washington Post. Looked kind of funny. And the publisher bias was a great example. Uh, the, uh, the danger of these poor guys being intimidated. Polio vaccine. We just did that as a curiosity. Yes, the vaccine is basically the cause of most outbreaks. Uh, it was an important thing in reference to coronavirus because you can shed viruses after being vaccinated. Remember we did last week, influenza, six times shed, shedding rate. Uh, not feeling good people because people being terrified. And yes, they may be coming for your pets soon. And that is it again. Thank you for staying with me. And the world mask information, we'll, we'll cover that again. What we'll do too next week is maybe we'll go through the stringency index. And if there's any code that you need or whatever it is, just put it out there and I'll see about getting it for you. And, uh, but, you know, take it from there and take it for what it's worth. Cases do result, tests do seem to result in more cases. And uh, we should be going by hospitalization rates and death rates and, um, and having controls, which is see if we're working, what is working is what is not. And we have to stop this policy of where we are labeling researchers to whether they're liberal or conservative scientists and or in at the same time too terrifying researchers into being afraid to publish data because it doesn't go with the party line again this is not the dark ages we're acting like it's the dark ages mask distancing things like that lockdowns quarantines but we're so much more advanced so much more so let's start utilizing the tools which our ancestors have worked many, many years to develop for us. And I'll catch you guys all later on. Ralph signing off. Gratitude. Thank you. And see you all next time. Bye.